Welcome back to NTV tonight on this special coverage on the day that Kenya's third president, Mwai Kibaki, passed away. And just before uh, Olive gets into a conversation with the good professors in regards to the life and times of Kibaki, let's take a look at a conversation that is quite critical. And now, when it comes to those who knew the late president, Mwai Kibaki, nobody quite spent more time working with him than, he, than the former head of public service and secretary to the cabinet, that is Ambassador Francis Mudaura. True. Mudaura spoke to NTV News editor Ben Kitili, describing the late Kibaki as the father of modern Kenya. Francis Mudaura is one of the most recognizable figures from the 10-year reign of Kenya's third president, the late Emilio Mwai Kibaki. For a decade, Mudaura served as the head of public service and secretary to Kibaki's cabinet. <laughs> you can't get a better, a better master. You know, he was, um, you remember I told you when I went there first, he said the state house is open to you, day and night. And the telephone can call me any time of the night or the day. Man, what else do you, do you need? The late President Mwai Kibaki served in various positions in Kenya's post-independence government, helping craft the nation's economic blueprints, as a young legislator and vibrant cabinet minister. For him, he was, as an MP, it was very brief before he became a minister. So we knew him more as a minister for finance. And uh, the, even he was very popular uh, with the, the World Bank, the IMF, because he talked with them at the same level. He talked, his communication, he was very, very effective. And um, even the, um, the, the economic strategy, the first economic, pl uh, economic plan, national economic plan, was, um, worked very well because of his input and the way even he marketed it, even in parliament. In the 1990s, Mudaro's career would branch off Kibaki's as the late president got into opposition for 10 years. Then in 2002, as Mudaro was preparing to retire from public service, Kibaki took over power and appointed him to head the civil service. Having served as ambassador for you know, several years, almost seven years, and then uh, secretary general of the East African community for five years and uh, permanent secretary for two years, and then my term, in, my term in TH, 55 years, was closing that, that time. So I did not expect to be reappointed. Um, but I was appointed when the announcement came. <laughs> Nobody told me uh, it was announced that I was, uh, I was the PS for security. So I, I took it with a lot of, uh, a lot of um, thanks. <laughs> Mudaura has shared insights on several key moments of the Kibaki administration, including the controversial memorandum of understanding between Kibaki and Raila Odinga. Eventually the selection was done. The, some of the ministers which Raila wanted were left out. Others, just from the same area, others from the same area, was selected, and that was the, the main cause. Know that Raylan got less than uh, he wanted, but the names of the ministers were not 100% the same. The Bengal general election of 2007 has been described by some people as a blemish in the grand Kibaki legacy. However, Mudara says that Kibaki was ready to hand over power at the end of his first term. Raida was in the lead, at one point even by a million votes. When he found it, the, the margin was narrowing. And we were getting telephones from, especially Mount Kenya region, were saying the votes have not come from Mount Kenya region because it was very wet. It was raining very heavy. You remember the history of um, uh, the Rakanidi resort. They came late because the area was very wet. All Mount Kenya region was very wet at that time. When he found the, 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 
the balance was, I mean, the Kibaki was winning, although the, it had not yet closed, but we knew it was going to close that gap. I asked the president, I told him, Your Excellency, because there is so much tension in the country, can I go and talk to the media, the, the chief media editors and the, and the owners, to tell them they have to, be, to handle this transition very, very responsibly. Because the way tensions are, you can very easily trigger violence. It would be good. Then there was the controversial dusk swearing in of Kibaki on December 30th, 2007. So when the, because the tension was growing, the people were being mobilized in the town, and you know, Kibera, people were up in arms. When you were in that type of situation, if you, conti if you continue with, to operate within a vacuum, then things can get out of hand. The former head of public service was in Kibaki's ear for the better part of 10 years, says he has lost the best boss he has ever had, Ben Kitili, NTV.